All right, well, I'm Reba from Code Orange, and these are my pedal boards. <laughs> What I have with me are two boards. One board is my touring board, which I unfortunately had to slim down a hell of a lot. Um, and then my other board is always just what I'm using to change around when I'm recording or writing or messing around, whatever. Um, so what I have going right now is, yeah, I'm going into my touring board first, which is all set up, um, you know, to use live in a very convenient way. And then my, uh, my fun board, I guess you could say, which is just straight in series all the way through. The guitar I'm using now is my signature, um, which I absolutely love. It's ESP LTD RM600. Um, I have a rail hammer pickup in the bridge right now, which I'm down with. I also play EMG sometimes, but I like to swap it out. And then uh, my amp is an EVH amp, um, 5153, 100 watt, EL34. My favorite amp I've ever played. And uh, as soon as I heard it, I used it on our entire record, and I absolutely love it. It's insane. Um, and the matching cab with our sick Chrome Panther decal right there. Beautiful. <laughs> My signal chain we got, it's pretty uh, hard to remember, honestly, because it's constantly changing. But <laughs> first off, we have my decimator and my tube screamer, which are my just standard go-to tone, uh, tone pedals, which honestly, eventually, I'll probably move them off my board um, and get them out of the way, because who needs something you're never going to click at your feet? You know, I, just, I, need, I use them for my standard heavy tone, and it's completely necessary. The decimator is the best gate I ever owned, ever had. It works insanely well and it's super simple. So next I have my AMT Wah. Uh, I think it's called the Japanese Wah. Um, I absolutely love this pedal. I use it on pretty much every lead that I can. Um, and I just love the expressiveness of it. And um, when I think about pedals, I think about how expressive they can be. And that's the same reason why I want to get rid of the Tube Screamer and the Decimator off my board, because what I want on my board are expressive pedals. And the wah is the definition of that historically. And just, it's, you know, it feels like you're playing it like an instrument while you're also playing your instrument in your hands. And I absolutely love that. Wah, it just does the trick. You take a solo and it's so dry and sterile um, with just a regular distortion. And honestly, I find that I don't even need reverb, I don't even need delay. All I need is this wah pedal. It just adds enough expression. Um, and then, you know, using the Harmon S in conjunction with that, that's really been my go to lately. And if I have the luxury of being able to fit a reverb on my board for noise parts, I'll use it for all kinds of stuff like that. Um, we have a song called Spy, actually, that um, we played live a lot. And there's a lot of noise stuff in the intro of that song. And I'll just go insanely hard with the wah pedal, with the harmonist, and with usually a reverb or a delay pedal. Um, kind of like sweeping, building noise. Um, and that leads me to the Boss Harmonist, which is very similar in that regard, that it's expressive. And it's so simple, but you just, uh, you know, it's really great for sweeps and for bends and um, noise and just exaggerations of any kind of expressive playing you're doing live. And it's also just another type of pedal you can just hammer on it. You know, I love being able to just, like, go insanely hard on pedals as if they're part of the show and not just, 
you know, there to make a sound or there for a, for a basic tone. Um, and then I have my, possibly my favorite pedal, which is this Moog uh, ring mod. Uh, it's called the MF ring. And uh, I've been using it for a really long time. Um, it's really just for noise bursts. <laughs> I have a lot of trouble finding pedals that can cut through the insane amount of shit going on in our band. <laughs> and that cuts through. Like you, it, it's resonating through the entire venue. I can hear it every time it, it's turned on. And that's what I love about it. You, you don't even know where it's really coming from. It just sounds like a blast of noise. And you might think it's like a synth. You might think it's something else. But it's guitar. And it's just, you know, I jack the frequency in the mix up, the tone up. and. Uh, I use it on a lot of songs that we've recorded. I use it on forever for the main, uh, you know, main pitch bend noise. And, um, and you can also use that expressively, which is, again, why I love it. Basically, the wah, just, uh, I use that to sweep it, um, as opposed to you know, bending down and turning the frequency knob, which I often do. And I've actually made a lot of samples using that. Like what I'll do is uh, turn this off for a minute. Um, I'll just kind of hit record and then I'll just sweep the frequency knob and record it and sample it, so. Um, and yeah, for those of you who know Code Orange, that's actually what um, I did to make that noise on the Forever Verses that repeats. Um, and then Shade layered some of his stuff in there too. But yeah, um, like in context, you can use it for all kinds of insane noise. So yeah, I use it a lot in rhythmic senses too. Um, again, I'm so used to just smacking pedals in a rhythmic way live. Um, and I'll do it a lot of times in riffs. Again, if you know the band Kill the Creator, there's this crazy little noise. That's what I was just playing. Um, and a lot of times I'll do something and our electronics guy will do something on synth. And together it can be really powerful. And you almost, again, not really know what's real, what's fake. It's all coming at you from all sides of the band. That's what I love about it. Um, there's another part on the song Real that um, I have everything jacked up pretty high, and it's just kind of like a, a head fuck, pretty much. Uh, we come in with this pit at the end of the song, and the mood pedal's on. It's just bombardment. So. It's just something that I don't think a lot of people use it for. Cuts through um, with the band, and it just yeah, it just like honestly gets people to turn heads. I oftentimes look out in the crowd and I kind of just want people to turn their heads. People who are on their phones and aren't paying attention. Um, and if you turn that pedal on, they're gonna turn some fucking heads, so. I always like to kind of think about like, okay, start off with what I think I would want. And then if I take it away, is it worse? You know, or like basically my, my theories on it is that you want to use as least as you can when it comes to just a standard tone. Going from the amp straight to the guitar is ideal. But I know for a fact, if I turn this tube skimmer off, my sound becomes all flubby. And that's really all that I use it for. I just use it for a little bit of juice so that I don't, my chugs don't sound flubby. <laughs> to me, that's perfect. That's all I need. Um, and then same with the decimator. It's like, without this, you know, if you have shitty power, you need it. Um, if you want clean cutoffs, you need it. Usually, I actually run another gate. But uh, the only downside is that sometimes it's hard to hit pinches when you got a decimator going, but as long as you have it dialed right, um, it's, it's perfect, so. Works for me. My lead sound is really probably what I use the most, as I've been talking about with my AMT wah pedal and my harmonist. Um, I use those a lot. I always have my harmonist on just in case I'm feeling like I wanna mess around pretty much.
pedal board number two, the fun board, as I call it, which I just made up right now. But all right, <laughs> we got the Earthquaker pedals, which, you know, it honestly makes me sad that I can't have them on my touring board sometimes. But in reality, they're, for me, more inspirational in terms of writing and creating and recording and all of that, because it's just, there's so much freedom within it and you can use them in so many different ways that I don't even know if they were intended to be used for, who knows, but all interpretation. So I got my C machine first, which is a course pedal basically. And uh, I've been using that one. That one in the afterneath, I've probably been using the longest. Um, used them a lot on like all of our kind of clean songs like Bleeding in the Blur and stuff like that. And then I got the afterneath, as I said, both amazing pedals just have such a lush feeling to them and you can really dig into them and dial them however you want. Afterneath can get absolutely insane. So <laughs> I love that about it. We got the Grain Orbiter, uh, which I got probably before we did our last album. And um, I think it's probably my favorite phaser I've ever had. And it's really hard to find phasers that work good with guitar, especially when there's a lot of other effects in the, in the chain going on. And a phaser can just get lost or sound, make it sound muddy. And I find that I can avoid all of those things with the Grain Orbiter, and it just adds like another texture. Um, then we got the Disaster Transport, which is delay and reverb. Um, and this one I've actually used a lot live. I used to take it with me all the time. Um, if it wasn't so big, I definitely would have it on my board right now. <laughs> but um, I love it. It's like It makes it so convenient to have the two switches with the delay A and B, so I can have either a, sh a shit ton of delay for something that's maybe just supposed to be kind of chaotic and noisy on purpose. But then I can also just have the, the A side if I want just you know some delay for maybe a lead or something that's you know more chilled out and uh, supposed to kind of cut through clearly. Um, then we got the Abominable Pedals uh, Hellmouth, which is probably my favorite distortion I've ever had. Um, the only reason I don't use it um, Set of the tube skimmer is just because it's a bit too noisy to gate. But whenever I'm actually recording with distortion, I'm always using that. It sounds amazing. It cuts through really hard. I can get absolutely insane feedback with it, which I love. Um, and it's just badass. Astral Destiny pedal, which is, I believe, a new Earthquaker pedal that I've been messing around with maybe for the last couple weeks. I know there's an insane amount of things you can do with it that I haven't even gotten to explore yet. But what I love so far is just the amount of control that I have over my reverb. But if you also just want something simple and that sounds good, you can just have that and you don't have to go too far. You don't have to go too deep. It's really easy to just get a really good reverb sound that doesn't muddy up my tone. And that's the issue I have with reverbs is that they always muddy up the sound and I hate that, but this pedal does not do that. And I love that. Um, and yeah, I've been messing around. It has some sort of expression, I guess they call it stretch, um, which I've been doing a lot of just kind of in and outs and it's really expressive. And, it, and I know I have a feeling that I'm going to want this on my board just because of that. Cause again, the expressive aspect is my favorite part. So then we got, uh, the Banana Anna pedal, if that's how you say it. I think it's called the Mandala pedal. Um, I absolutely love this pedal. It's insane. There's nothing like it. Um, and if you know our band, you know that we mess around with a lot of glitch effects and all kinds of stuff like that. And I've never, before this one, been able to find a pedal that can kind of recreate that in the way that a uh, digital system might. Um, but this one does it, and it's really rhythmic and it's like it has some amount of control, but also some amount of no control, which is actually why I like it, because it's kind of you can do things accidentally. And for a lot of glitchy noise parts, it's just like adds this insane chaos factor that nothing else can do. And it's just you can hold the, the switch down um, while doing other things and it'll still be glitching. You can play on top of it. It's insane. 
the final pedal here is the ZVEX sonar pedal, which is a tremolo pedal, but um, I actually use it a lot more kind of as a fuzz pedal. Um, I've used it for tremolo, but I have everything kind of dialed up so that it more just sounds like, uh, makes your guitar sound like metal, basically, or like literally like metal. So um, kind of hard to, to explain without hearing it, but um, yeah, it just has a really cool character to it. it uh, it's like almost like another distortion pedal in the way that I use it. Yeah. So one of the songs that I can show you more in context uh, how I'm using these pedals is a song called Cold Metal Place um, on our new album. Now obviously I'm just using my standard distortion for a lot of that, but there's a really insane lead that I love, one of my favorite leads on the album on the verse of that song. Um, I was kind of playing it a little bit earlier, but I'm using the AMT wah for that. Um, and a lot of times I'll add something on, I think I, I, honestly hard to remember a little bit, but I might have had the Hellmouth on too. Um, I did like maybe two layers of it, but here's a gist. So my third rig that I have here is my laptop running Ableton. Um, a big goal of mine in the future is to somehow live be able to use plugins along with my pedal board. Um, right now though, I use it as a writing tool. Um, I use it while recording. Um, when we were recording our last album underneath, I pretty much just had all my pedals and yeah, my, in the box, all my plugins. And was using, we're using them in conjunction with each other and um, some stuff had already been figured out, some stuff I was just doing on the fly. Um, some of the plugins I wanted to show were uh, these Sound Toys plugins. Now I have probably a bajillion plugins, but these ones are definitely a go-to of mine, and are very reminiscent to me of um, pedals. But what I love about them is that cr they create kind of another d digital element that's in contrast to the analog aspect of the pedals, um, which I love. Um, and it also helps get guitars to cut through the mix, especially with a band like ours that's so heavy and so thick and dense with um, a full band along with a full, you know, synth electronic instrument as well. And it's really hard sometimes to get leads and delays to cut through if they're not digital. So, yeah, like you could say on a lot of the solos, maybe on songs like Easy Way and Soul for Surrounding, I was using delays on here, but then I would use expressive pedals at my feet, so. <laughs> So yeah, hopefully you can hear, it's just the delay cuts through in a way that I've never heard a pedal be able to do. I would love a pedal, pedal to be able to do that, but, and also just the stereo aspect um, is always amazing to have. Right now I'm using this Crystallizer plugin. Um, I use the Crystallizer plugin and I also use the Echo Boy plugin for delays. Um, and I'll often use those in conjunction with the Phase Mistress and maybe just have you know, a little more texture to a lead or something. Pedals, it's just, it's similar to maybe, you could say like a song in the lyrics of a song. If you hear someone's lyrics to a song, you can interpret them in, you know, whatever way you hear them in your life. And that maybe isn't the way that the creator intended them to be. Um, but that's what makes them so meaningful. And it helps you understand yourself through what you're using. And I see pedals in a very similar way. You know, half of these pedals, if not all of these pedals, I'm, hopefully I'm using them in a way that is personal and that, you know, my exploration of the pedals and what they sound like and what they can do is completely connected to myself and what I, you know, want to express and want to explore.